right, let's go ahead and build a phylogenetic tree. Now, as you can see the first one, we have this table right here, which uh, on the, on the left-hand side, we have a, all the characters. Okay, so here um, we have uh, characters. Uh, we have backbone, hen's jaw, four limbs, and amnion, milk, and dorsal fin. And then across here, we have all of the taxa. Okay, so these are the ones that we're going to compare. Now, normally the term outgroup is not going to be there for you, right? So that's really the first thing that you want to try to determine is what is your outgroup? Or really when you're building a tree and you're doing research, you're going to choose your outgroup and you're going to choose your outgroup, which may be closely related to your in-group, which is remember the rest, the, basically all the organisms that you're going to be comparing. It's going to be closely related, but uh, not within that group normally. So normally that L group isn't going to have any of the characteristics that your in group does. If it does have any, it's probably just one. All right, so let's kind of look at this asterisk right here. So this asterisk kind of points to this information down here. Okay, and it says, although adult dolphins have only two obvious limbs, they're flippers, as embryos, they have two hind limb buds for a total of four limbs. Okay, so here we have, um, we're going to say four limbs are present, but we're going to look at two different trees where we in, basically use the morphology of the adult dolphin and then look at the comparison of the tree if we used the fact that it does actually have four limbs during development. Now, what you want to do first is... Uh, basically, first you determine what your outgroup is, and then um, you're going to start to build the tree. Now, what I'm going to do is build it kind of like what your, uh, your lab manual is asking, okay? So with the lab manual, you're going to use cladistics, and you're going to basically draw a diagonal line, okay? All of your branches are going to come off of that diagonal line. So we'll go ahead and put this as the ancestor of all of the groups of organisms, right? Including your outgroup. Now your outgroup is gonna be the first one to branch out. Now it's always important to remember that the taxa belong at the ends of the branches, okay? The uh, characteristics or the shared derived characters or traits are going to go basically be hash marks along the lines or lineages of your tree. Right. So we know what the outgroup is. The outgroup here, we're going to go ahead and have that branch off first, and that'll be the lancelet. Okay, the lancelet has zero characters, so it's very closely related to the common ancestor of all of our groups of organisms. Now, the data in this table are organized very nicely. Now, if your data is not organized in this way where you can kind of see a diagonal um, where the presence of traits starts to increase. Now, you might have some odd ones, which is totally fine. Um, but it's a good way to organize your data in such a way that it makes it easy to read. So now you're going to look at your next organism. So now, basically, what you, we know the lancelet has none of the traits. Right. Now, what happens which distinguishes the lancelet from something else that only has that one trait? Right. So look, we've got uh, the lamprey, which only has one trait. And what trait is that? It's a backbone. Right. So we know, we could go back to the tree, that backbone happened first. Okay, so backbone happens. And then we have our next group that diverges, and that's going to be the lamprey. Oops. We have lamprey on our tree, and um, we're going to start moving uh, the same way. So basically, you're going to use the same idea as we did before. So now we have, uh, we have the lamprey on there, and then we have tuna, which has two additional traits. And then we have salamander, which has, uh, well, two additional, plus this one down here. And then the salamander, which has the three additional traits. And then what we want to do is uh, try to determine where we want to put something next. So I'm thinking that the tuna will go next, right? 
because it has a hinge jaw. It also has a dorsal fin, right? Dolphin also has a dorsal fin. So we're going to kind of have to worry about that in just a moment, right? So let's go ahead and put tuna on there, right? Tuna. Okay. So tuna has a hinge jaw. So you can see that everything else has a hinge jaw. Now tuna also has a dorsal fin, but only the dolphin has a dorsal fin. So you don't want to put dorsal fin here because if you put it here, then that suggests everything after that also has a dorsal fin. Okay. So we know that everything has a hinge jaw. So we're going to put hinge jaw here. Okay. Now tuna also has a dorsal fin. Right, so let's go ahead and put dorsal fin here. Okay, and now we have salamander. Okay, so salamander has four limbs along with everything else. So we can put four limbs, which happen next, four limbs. Okay, and salamander is the first one um, that has four limbs, but doesn't have any of the other characters that we're looking at. So we have salamander here. All right. So what's next? We just kind of move on down. Look, the data is just perfect for us. So now we have an amnion. Everything else has an amnion. All right. So the next thing to branch off is going to be a turtle. All right. Then we have uh, milk. Okay. So uh, the uh, leopard and the dolphin both, both uh, produce milk. Right, so now we have a leopard. Okay, and then we have a dolphin that just kind of falls off the end here. All right, so what's different about the dolphin and the leopard, right? So the dolphin also has a dorsal fin. All right, so now look, we've got dorsal fin twice. But the dolphin has four limbs based on embryology. Right, so we've got this tree, and let's remember um, it, from the uh, text, you should have read about the principle of parsimony. Okay, the principle of parsimony states that basically the simplest explanation is the best explanation. So when you were talking about trees, the simplest explanation would be the explanation or the hypothesis, in this case, since trees are a hypothesis, that requires the least amount of changes for it to be true, right? So we got how many changes here? We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven changes. So we've got seven events that must have happened for this hypothesis to be true. Now let's, okay, so let's go ahead and build this tree again, except we're going to put the dolphin with the tuna as sister species, right? So we'll see what the difference in this tree will be, right? So let's go ahead and just um, start to draw the tree. I'm just going to quickly build it this time. Okay, so we have the lancelet. Okay, and then we have the lamprey. And then we have the tuna. And then we have a uh, sister species, dolphin. And then we have the salamander. And then we have uh, the turtle. And then the leopard. Okay, so let's put the events there. So this is the common ancestor of all of them. Okay, so the lamprey has a backbone, but the lancelet doesn't. All right, and then um, the tuna has uh, the hinge jaw, but the lamprey doesn't. And everything else has hinge jaw. And then tuna and dolphin both have the dorsal fin. Okay, and then salamander has four limbs. All right, and then uh, amnion. And then milk. Okay, so uh, we've set this up and we have uh, tuna and dolphin as uh, sister groups. 
Okay. Now, however, uh, we need to add in some things regarding the dolphin uh, because we know that the dolphin also has uh, four limbs and an amnion. No, it, we're saying it doesn't have four limbs. Now we're saying it has an amnion and milk as well. All right. So now we have amnion and milk. Now, um, it actually does have four limbs. So we're going to go ahead and put four limbs here. And there's another another way we could do this. We could put four limbs with the hen's jaw back here and then put um, two and a no four limbs, right? So, um, but it makes more sense to do it this way. So let's count the, the amount of events for this tree to actually be true. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, uh, six, seven, eight, nine events. As opposed... Oh, I'm sorry, seven events uh, for this tree right here. So we have seven events. So this one is the one that's more, most parsimonious. So if we did put dolphin with tuna, just because that they share this character, the dorsal fin, putting them as sister species, that would not be the most par parsimonious way to do it. So um, this would be the best explanation or the best hypothesis to go with uh, based on the data that we have. All right, so that's one example. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, post another one. So you could go ahead and view that example as well.